Well guys, welcome to another episode of Monday Morning CAD. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a favor, click the subscribe button. Um, really help me out trying to build this channel as big as I can get it. Uh, like the video if you picked up any tent tips or tricks or pointers. And uh, drop me a comment, um, whether it's something you need clarified something that you don't agree with whatever it is drop me a comment do the whole youtube thing and uh yeah so today we have my rat rod here and specifically we're going to design some header flanges now i've got a 260 cube 4.3 liter v8 oldsmobile that came out of a buick stuffed underneath my chevy i don't like the fact that the manifold stuck way through the firewall plus they're big ugly cast things and in my case uh, i can't quite see it there but that ear is completely broken off now this is not a small block chevy obviously the middle po ports are siamese they don't even uh, come out on the head all the way, so there's no way to seal off these ports. There is very limited stuff out there, and I can say honestly that manifold flanges, turbo flanges, anything like that was super common for me to program. Guys doing turbo systems, you know, not everybody wants to go out and spend $50 on a ready to go one. I used to program these all the time, burn them out of mild steel for guys. So I'm going to take this header into the house and I'm going to show you exactly how I program these out. Now, if we're starting with the manifold, this could just as easily be done with a template. We'll find that a lot of the bolt holes will actually end up on in line. So I always like to start with a line that's scribed all the way across. In this case, we have four bolt holes that line up on center. So the first thing we're going to do is go into the CAD software and draw a center line. And we know that that's 15 and a quarter inches long. So that's where we're going to start. You guys have seen this CAD software before you've been here. This is Rhino 3D. This is what I use. But basically, I just go up and grab my line tool, click one end, type in 15.25, and we're good. Uh, excuse me while I do this one-handed, but if we line up this tape measure, it's more apparent to me than you guys that center to center on the outer bolt holes is 14 inches remember that we're starting at the one marker here and the outer holes are four and a quarter apart and we can double check that on this side here as well and show it's at the five and a quarter mark since we're starting at the one that's four and a quarter now Obviously, it's easier to measure from the edge of the holes to get center edge, left edge to left edge, for example. In the software here, I'm just going to draw a 14-inch line away from my original line. I'm going to draw a 7 16 hole. My bolt holes are 3 8 um, I'd like them just a hair oversized, a little bit less clean up. Clamp is all we care about here, to be honest. This isn't a high-performance car. I'm going to draw my circle on the end, and then I'm going to copy it over my 4 and a quarter inches. I'm going to mirror it off of that line, which will give me the mirrored pattern. And since left and manifolds are interchangeable, I can just take all four of those bolt holes, type the move command, move them from my first line down, or my 14 inch line on center and down to my other line. And if we double check our measurements here, we're 14 inches, we're four and a quarter on either side. That would mean that we match the measurements on our manifold. Now, we'll start with this middle port. We know that, for the sake of argument, it's three and a quarter inches. It is, start at the one, and it's, oh, two inches tall, so three and a quarter by two. And the port top is 
13 sixteenths above center line. Now in the software, we can go over to our rectangle square type tool and grab the one that lets us do rounded corners. We can type in three and a quarter for our right to left measurement, two inch tall for our vertical, and type in 0.25 for the radius. I can make that anywhere, move it from the center down to the center of the line, and then move it up the 13 sixteenths, and we're good. Now, moving to the outer port. See, this outer port's a little bit bigger. It's two and an eighth by one and a half. Uh, let's see. But it's also about 13 sixteenths up. So, back into the same software, grab our rounded corner rectangle tool and type in our one and a half wide by two and an eighth tall, 0.25 radius corners. Now we're gonna move this down to the line and then we're gonna move it up 13 sixteenths. And then we're going to move it from the intersection point of the line on the right side to the center line of our bolt hole so that we can double check the manifold and see how far over it needs to be. Now, well, we know that port's centered. We move this one to the center of the uh, bolt hole. If we measure off the one, putting that on the center, it is three quarters of an inch over from center. We can add that to the model as well. So this is simple enough. Just type the move command in, click anywhere. Since it drags linearly, we can move it over three quarters of an inch. And then we're just going to grab our dimension tool and check from the left side of this rectangle to the center line of the bolt hole just so that we can verify because verifying is important. And it's pretty easy to see that that measurement is correct as well. So since the manifolds are symmetrical, I can actually just go in, grab that rectangle port, use the mirror command and flip it to the other side. So, quick measurement here. We know this bolt hole is centered because the manifolds are symmetrical. But center of the bolt hole to the top of the port is a half an inch. So we can set a bolt hole on the center, move it up half an inch, and that one's good. And we're back into the software. Grab the circle command, set it to the center there. Use our 7 sixteenths, type move, hit enter, and move it up 0.5 inches. And that is our final bolt hole right there. Now we can see that it's pretty much a quarter inch of material around any of the gasket surfaces. Doesn't matter if we go to the bolt holes, quarter inch or less all the way around. This uses 3 8 bolts. I've set the holes to 7 16 so we got lots of meat. So since we've got our three in this case ports and our five in this case bolts we can do everything else in CAD now. So from here it gets pretty simple we can actually grab our circle use the offset command type 0.375 or 3 eighths of an inch and uh, we can offset this 3 eighths of an inch we're going to offset the outer bolt holes. Um, the three outer bolt holes we're going to offset all three of our ports and then I'm going to use the line tool to connect the far outer bolts, the top of the circle and the bottom of the circle to each other, which will give our scar connector between the ports. This will also give us material that we can trim out of the middle. Obviously, it doesn't need all that meat for weight, plus I'm sure it benefits from the flex some. I mean, manifolds get hot. They're going to move. So being able to have that material to flex a little bit is not a bad thing. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me use the trim tool. Basically, it goes in and removes all of the lines that crosses over each other. And you can see once you've clicked trim, I can go in and it removes every one of those lines that crosses over. We haven't selected the middle line in our case because we're just going to go in to delete that. That was purely a reference to be able to measure off of while we started. But since we're we're done, that line isn't important at all. And if we don't select it, it doesn't use it for the trim function. Now, I go in and use the radius tool because I don't like sharp edges. 
it's uh, having a fit, having to try to radius that there. So I'm having to radius and it left a line behind. I'll come back after and delete that little stub line. Everything else is still connected. But I'm manually going through and radiusing each corner. Um, in this case, I'm using a half inch radius. This is purely style points at this point. It really doesn't matter what radius you pick. I just decided that that was the number I was going to run with. It happens to look good, so I didn't redo it. Um, so once all of these lines are done, I can go in and remove those lines that didn't radius properly. Um, as you can see here, I'm just selecting them and deleting them. I can delete my center line because we don't need that anymore. Um, and right there we have a manifold. Um, now, these ports are virtually exactly what the manifold currently is. As you can see, if I grab the center line of that port, I could draw a circle in there. Um, since the port is an inch and a half wide, it ends up an inch and a half circle. Um, I haven't quite decided exactly what ports I'm going to use or if I'm going to split that middle port or not. Um, I got to sit down and do a little bit of thinking about it. We could draw in an oval port, which makes it super easy to squash the tube out. Um, a bit of a pinch on a two, on say a two inch tube would squash down pretty nice, or probably an inch and three quarter tube would squish down nice. And as you could see, I could take that exact same oval, I could mirror it on either side of that port. It's not exact, but I mean, where this is literally for a rat rod, we're not building a top fuel drag car realistically anybody that's building a top fuel car is probably not coming to one of us for header flanges and i missed a couple of radiuses up top but a couple of quick clicks and they're good to go now i may still offset the ports in a little bit give me a little bit of room i've got to decide what tube i'm going to use but as it sits that's a quick and dirty header flange super simple um, do me a favor if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet Click the button, subscribe to the channel, help me grow this thing, help me work the YouTube algorithms. Like the video, drop a comment, and I'll see you next Monday.